Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be finishing off Schneider Electric ATV12 drive where we're going to be setting up the drive to run remote control with multi-frequency setup and also, whatever, how much time we've got left, we're going to talk about a, a switching frequency, what it is, what it does to the motor and uh, any other sort of technical stuff what to look out for as well. So before we get started guys, if you haven't seen the last two videos where we uh, uh, set up the comm commission to drive and run the drive in local mode and also the, the, where we run the drive in remote mode using two wire, three wire control, all those videos, uh, related manuals, parts, everything else is all gonna be in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. <music> Okay, so the wiring all done. So let's talk about how to set up the first uh, setup we're going to have, which is our multi-frequency setup. Now, first really we think we need to do, we need to assign inputs. We are still staying in a macro, start-stop macro, where most of the uh, inputs are unassigned, which is uh, more or less uh, good for us. So we don't have to deassign anything. So uh, in page uh, 69, here we go, in here you can see to achieve two speeds, you need to add uh, one input to uh, to the uh, program to one of the inputs. To achieve four speeds, you need to add uh, add this to another input. And to achieve eight speeds, you need to add a uh, one more input. So basically, three inputs in together. And then it shows in here what sort of channels needs to be closed to achieve uh, those kind of speeds. So your reference uh, your reference in here, which I talk about in a minute, that that will be your first initial speed. And by then, by selecting uh, uh, these buttons in here, they will officially will jump to those uh, preset frequencies, which I'll show you where to set those frequencies up in a minute. So, and to preset them up, we need to go to functions. So if you go to the configuration, full, all the way down to the functions, and as you for on, on default, the two, three, and four are absolutely unassigned, so we can be quite straightforward for us to uh, do it. So the same way we did it with the jog in the last video, you go to PSS, this is just where the preset speeds, and tells you how many speeds do you want. So if you want only a uh, two speeds, you can actually just go in a PS2 and select the second one to be your uh, the L2 to be your preset speed, but we don't want it. We don't. We want to work with all eight speeds. So I have assigned that my uh, I assigned my uh, L2, L3, and L4 to run a two speed, four speed, or eight speed um, system. So in here I have added the uh, for the two speeds. Then if you want four speed, you need to add one more another L, so which we added L3. And if you want eight speed, ooh, if you want eight speeds you add another input, which you added L4. The maximum, that's all you can do pretty much. Effectively, you can have uh, nine speeds, but the first one is will be driven by standard frequency within L1, which can be, by the way, controlled with potentiometer or preset in there as minimum speed, in a minimum speed parameter. So in here, I don't usually do that because I like to have my run, uh, run signal to go on and stay on and no speed will be done. And then I select what frequency I want to do it. So in here we have set to that, and then uh, right after that you can start editing all your frequencies. So you can see 20, 25, and so on. Effectively, by combining uh, switches, which you can show in a minute, you will be able to achieve all those frequencies. So that's how you pretty much set up your uh, drive to a uh, run at multi-speed uh, frequency uh, and uh, preset speed frequency. That's and the wiring. And uh, that's how it's pretty much going to look. Uh, number one, 24 volt signal coming to the e-stop, going through the e-stop, and then it sort of powers up all four uh, and, uh, and, uh, normally open contacts. And from there on, as you can see, this, this guy in here is going to be our run signal, which I'll show in a minute on an uh, uh, actual panel what it looks like. With this one, we're going to activate run, and the frequency will stay at zero, not do nothing. And only then we're going to be uh, selecting these to achieve desired frequency or preset speed that we have uh, preset uh, to those switches. And obviously my, my uh, first uh, two, two preset speed goes for the digital input two, four preset speeds will go for digital input a uh, uh, three, and our eight preset speed will go for digital input four. So that's how the station is done. 
and not the wiring I mean and the station itself is going to look like that I have a run then I have speed 1 speed 2 and speed 3 and I'll show you in a minute exactly why I like to have my runs speed as well let me put this cover on to the uh, station and we'll shall test it out okay station is all ready so uh, here we go so that's what it's going to be looking like so let's put all the speeds into a, uh, a non-working mode because remember for any of these speeds working it needs to have this run signal so that's why the l1 always has to be closed to for the l2 3 and 4 to work so if you see down there once we put L uh, run in the mode, as you can see, the drive shows a zero frequency. So now it's looking for some form of frequency. If you will have potentiometer in here, it will be obviously reading from potentiometer and uh, you, pretty much you're going to be running that frequency. I don't want it like that because I want to put it in run mode and I want specific speed. Let's say I want speed one. And there we go. It will be running at speed one. Then I can easily disconnect it. It still stays in the run mode and I can go for my speed two which I have already preset and a run again stays in and there we go and it goes to speed 25 I remember when I showed you the in, in a paperwork with the, with the digital inputs now you can uh, combine, uh, combine some of these to achieve different speeds so let's see there we go by combining speed 1 and speed 2 it will create the, not like combining the speeds but basically combining the inputs like uh, L3 and L4 it will give you that speed let's see what that does that gives us a 40, uh, what's that give us, 35, uh, what else the combinations, uh, I think that, that one, that one, that gives us a 20, pretty much hopefully you get the gist, because you can get a lot more than uh, that when it comes down speeds, and when you want to put the drive out of action, stop the run mode, and none of these speeds will work, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how multi-frequency setup is done and obviously it is uh, uh, more than uh, eight speeds you can do that nine speed which is your run but again i would not use it because i want once i want to control the speed i want exactly click the button exactly what i need to get so without further ado let's go get uh, let's get jump onto how what is a, uh, a switch in frequency and how that works with the noise Okay, when it comes down to switching fre switch frequencies, it's, it's, I was going to try to explain that in a very uh, quick way how that works without getting too complicated about it. So switching frequency is basically in a drive, inside the drive, there is a switches that uses the DC, DC power and converts it back to sort of an AC sinusoidal wave by using a switches and they, those switches has to work in a, a certain a time a period or frequency to achieve that sign so the wave wave and because it's, it's 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 switching on and off and off the wave is not perfect so this is where the noise more or less come from so but you can reduce that noise by upping switching frequency and by doing so the switch is going to work faster which means the sign so the wave is going to look better not tidier and cleaner and the drive will uh, the motor will start reducing that noise so basically the noise is coming from the actual switches within inside within the drive all the drives pretty much uh, hopefully that makes makes sense without getting far too there's so many videos out online if you want to check out a bit more in detail how that works so uh hopefully that makes uh, uh, more or less sense so uh there's one principle with that when it comes down to uh, switching frequency is obviously like any other equipment in the world the faster they go the more heat they produce and obviously this is where you have to be more or less careful and pretty much not to abuse the switching frequency because you will put the stress on those switches because now they have to work a lot faster to uh, quiet up the noise and obviously they'll generate the heat and all the malarkey that comes with it a lot of the drives have a self-management system inside them that will monitor that uh, switch switching uh, temperature and we'll adjust accordingly and in the manual if you look in the, a, a page what's the page 59 in here you could sort of see uh, what that uh, how to adjust that switch switching frequency 
there's a couple of parameters this particular drive uh, uh, gives and as you can say no matter what what frequency you do the drive will in event of overheating the drive will automatically decrease the switching frequency it is stored to, it, it is restored to its original values when the temperature returns to normal so let's have a look at it. what does that mean so let's have a listen let's put it in run mode and let's have a look this is how it sounds at 25 hertz at 4 hertz kilohertz switching frequency so let's go on to a uh, yeah, the configuration full and then go to a drc and then we go all the way to parameter called sfr and you know in here the surface, did we just give the SFR, here we go, and this is at the moment at what rate the switching frequency is working. So you can actually go lower, you can go you can go all the way to two frequency to preserve those switches, or you can go higher. So let's have a look what happens if we go to eight switching frequency. Enter it. So uh, exit the mode and try it in. As you can see, the drive is a lot more quieter now, a lot more smoother and it works really well so again that's pretty much for me that would be an excellent uh, uh, noise reduction it works very well and if you look at this another one called uh, let's turn this off uh, another pattern time which is switch, switch, switching frequency type and uh, in there you can see the hf1 let's uh, let's remove the run let's go to oh. Configuration for all the way to DRC and then we go to the SFT. Now this die looks like this die die doesn't even have that option. I'm not sure why that hasn't even been added to it. So it looks like it doesn't it has only that uh, one option. The the it looks like there's some things has been added to manual. There's not even in the menu. I'm not sure why that is, but here we go. So uh, as you can see, let's try what happens in uh, where are which which menu are we? We are in DRC. Then we need to go to to SFR. SFR. So let's have a look what look, what happens when you go to twelve. So now we put in the drive onto a pretty uh, high stress of the switches to receive our to pretty much get our noise down. But I don't think we need to go any more than that. But by the end of the day, the drive does manage. Is is some drives don't? I have seen drives don't have self management, so you, so the drive is just going to overheat. So let's have a look what it does at the twelve. Oh, we need to put that. Pretty much nothing changes. So. It's safe to say we have we are able to achieve pretty much a, a good noise level on switching frequency eight. So uh, let's go back to let's see how low we can go. Configs for DRC SFR. So we don't need that. So let's see what kind of frequency. Ooh we can get from let's say just six there you go so put in run mode as you can see it's the noise is still there we still more or less need about eight switching frequency let's let's change that to eight so uh config full drc SFR, and I think we need roughly about eight. Here we go. And what do we sound like? Here we go. Eight frequency is perfect for a good noise. Runs very well. Perfect. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I'm gonna use this opportunity to make this in a, make this into this video to sort of talk you through what is switching frequency. If you are guys are very much bothered by the noise the dry uh, the uh, motor is producing, that is very much to do with a switching frequency. And obviously there is a different types of uh, the blocks there, there or 
parts they can put in a drive with uh, eight poles, uh, switch, uh, eight pole systems, and then uh, now it's, it's a six pole system, there's a 12 pole system, and obviously, as those pole systems go higher, the switching frequency is much more smoother. But again, that is the subject for some different day. So, uh, most of the drives, especially the smaller drives, are produced with a six pole uh, frequency, a six pole systems in there. So, uh, I, uh, hopefully, that makes a sense for you to explain more or less what switching frequency is and helps you out understand how that works and probably understand why. Some no motors are running smooth, some motors are not. So here we go. That will be it, ladies and gentlemen, for this video. And this is actually going to be the last video where we're going to be doing, working on uh, Schneider Electric Drives, as there are at the moment none that I'm uh, planning to do for quite some time. So we'll be moving on to something new. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like that video, please smash that like. If you didn't, smash the dislike, comment, ask any questions, and I will answer them as accurate as and as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.